Hello and welcome. In this video, I'll be exploring this early 90s portable PC and taking a look at what's inside, as well as cleaning it up a bit, installing DOS, and if everything goes well, see what kind of games it can play. I'm not too familiar with these types of PC form factors and will be learning about them as I go along as well. So without any further ado, let's get to taking it apart and see what's inside. To open it up, there's just three screws on the back of the case that need to be removed. After that's done, the back panel just lifts off to reveal the internals. As you can see, there's quite a lot packed inside of this little case. Next, I'll be removing the hard drive and all the other components so I can get them ready for cleaning. So it did take a bit more time to get everything out than I thought it would. Um, there were these wires running in between the motherboard and this back panel, so I had to carefully squeeze all of these little plastic fasteners to free the motherboard first before removing it. There's also a little bit of corrosion going on because of this whole barrel battery, so I'm going to have to remove this and replace it with something. Before dealing with that battery and the corrosion, I'm going to clean the case and all the other parts first so I can dedicate more time to the motherboard afterwards. Most everything is now clean. We've got our floppy drives over here, a 128 megabyte hard drive, a Sirius Logic LCD controller card, an ArcNet 120ST, this really cool looking controller card, and an MSI 3121 motherboard with an Intel 386DX33, complete with warranty stickers still attached. I'll try and find information for each of the parts and add them into the video description. Next, I need to remove this nasty battery and try and clean up all of the corrosion as best I can. I need to remove the legs from the old battery so I can prep it for a replacement. For replacing the CMOS battery, I have a few different options. One option is to use a button cell battery holder and find a rechargeable CR2023. Another is to use a battery pack like this one. But since this board is already damaged, I'm going to do something that's probably going to upset some people and use a new barrel battery just to keep the look of everything as original as possible.
going to have to go back and do some more cleaning on the motherboard, but I need to buy a few things so I can do that more efficiently. For now, it's time to put everything back together and see what we get. See you all in a little bit. Alright, now that everything has been cleaned and put back together, it's time to turn our attention to this dirty keyboard and clean it up as well. Time to fire it up and see what we get. Something I forgot to mention earlier is that there are eight one megabyte sticks of RAM in this PC. Right now, only four megabytes are showing up, so I'll have to go back and figure out what's going on with that. But for now, I'm going to go through the BIOS and set everything up so it's ready to install DOS. Something I think is really neat about these older PCs is that they sometimes came with a hard disk utility that let you format the hard drive directly from the BIOS. I did check to see what was on this hard drive before doing this, but the only thing on there was a ton of error log files. So I've hit another snag in my plans. I have tried DOS 5.0, 6.0, and 6.22, as well as some images from WinImage, but every time I get into the installer, I see everything all garbled, which makes it hard to set up things properly without guessing. So I'm going to go ahead and try something I haven't used before and see how FreeDOS works on an old machine like this one. It is now three days later. I ran into issues installing FreeDOS where it would fail at different points during installation. Uh, it took six attempts to finally get everything installed over the course of 12 hours. And during these last few days, I also took the time to take everything apart and clean it all again to see if that would fix anything. And well, all eight megabytes of RAM are now showing up and the whole system seems to be running much faster. So I call that a win. Next on my list of things to do, I want to get a file manager installed to make it easier to navigate folders and copy files from disks. To achieve this, I'm going to go with Norton Commander 5.5. Now that Norton Commander is installed, I can more easily transfer whole folders full of games from a floppy disk over to the hard drive with a click of a button. Some of you might have noticed that this PC has an LED for the turbo function, but there's no turbo button. This system is set up so that the light is on when the PC is at full speed, and you can use keyboard commands to set it to a slower speed with Ctrl Alt minus, or set it back to full speed with Ctrl Alt plus. When the LED is on, the blinking pattern on the screen is faster. 
When the light is off, the pattern gets a little slower. Going back and forth between the two should make it a bit more apparent. And now for the age-old question, can it run Doom? It should be able to, but to answer that question, I'll be using shareware version 1.2. And, well, the answer is... sorta. Video is not displaying correctly, but it sounds like it's running at the right speed based on the PC speaker noises. This seems to be a limitation with the video card. It has dip switches to change between output options, but no matter which ones I choose, I get the same result, even with an external monitor. I've also tried other games as well, and for the most part, anything that has text mode graphic options seems to work fine, but anything that needs to use CGA, EGA, or VGA graphics has a hard time. If anyone has ideas on how to fix this, short of using a different video card, leave a comment below and I'll try those out, and maybe even revisit the idea of getting more games to run on this portable PC in the future. As it is right now, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I think this flip-up monochrome LCD screen is pretty unique, and the fact that it has a working contrast dial, which helped with recording, is pretty cool. I plan on recording some gameplay videos with this PC, and will upload those on my channel over the next couple days, so keep an eye out for those. But for now, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.